Hello, I'm Dr. Maria Corcoran from the University of Washington. In this Hepatitis C online mini lecture, I will review Hepatitis C screening recommendations and diagnostic pathways. In 2020, the CDC issued new recommendations for universal one-time hepatitis C screening in all adults ages 18 years of age and older, regardless of risk factors. These guidelines also recommended hepatitis C screening for all pregnant persons during each pregnancy. The CDC continues to recommend hepatitis C screening, regardless of age, in persons with recognized risk factors or exposures, as well as routine periodic testing for persons with ongoing risk factors. Furthermore, the CDC recommends hepatitis C screening in any persons who request it, recognizing that individuals may not feel comfortable sharing past or present risk factors for hepatitis C infection with healthcare providers. With regards to one-time risk factor or exposure-based testing for hepatitis C, the CDC recommends this be done regardless of age or setting prevalence in persons with HIV, persons who have ever injected drugs, prior recipients of clotting factors before 1987, prior recipients of blood products before 1992, organ transplant recipients before 1992, healthcare personnel or public safety personnel following needle stick or mucosal exposure, children born to mothers with hepatitis C, and persons with select medical conditions, including those who have ever received hemodialysis or individuals with persistently elevated ALT. With regards to periodic repeat testing for hepatitis C based on ongoing risk factors, the CDC recommends this be performed in persons who currently inject drugs and share any injection equipment, as well as persons with select medical conditions, including persons receiving maintenance hemodialysis. The American Association for the Study of Liver Disease, or AASLD, and the Infectious Diseases Society of America, or IDSA, have similarly published guidelines for hepatitis C screening, which are in large part similar to CDC guidelines. However, the AASLD and IDSA guidelines recommend risk factor-based testing in additional groups of individuals, including persons with a history of intranasal drug use, persons with a history of using glass crack pipes, men who have sex with men, and persons engaging in chemsex. Furthermore, the AASLD and IDSA recommend yearly hepatitis C testing for persons who inject drugs, HIV-positive men who have sex with men and engage in condomless sex, and men who have sex with men taking PrEP. There are two main diagnostic tests for hepatitis C, serologic antibody assays and molecular RNA tests. Serologic antibody assays detect human antibodies to hepatitis C. The most common serologic antibody assay used for hepatitis C diagnosis is the third-generation hepatitis C enzyme immunoassay, which detects antibodies that bind to recombinant antigens derived from four hepatitis C regions. A positive antibody test indicates exposure to the hepatitis C virus, but it cannot distinguish between active and past or treated infection. In rare cases, false positive antibody tests can occur. Molecular RNA tests detect the hepatitis C virus RNA through a process commonly referred to as nucleic acid amplification testing. A positive RNA test indicates active hepatitis C virus infection. To diagnose hepatitis C, the CDC recommends initial testing with a hepatitis C antibody assay. Persons who have a negative screening hepatitis C antibody test are considered not infected with hepatitis C and do not need further diagnostic evaluation unless there is concern for exposure to hepatitis C in the past six months, in which case testing for hepatitis C RNA or follow-up antibody testing is recommended. Furthermore, in persons who are severely immunocompromised, RNA testing can be considered as these individuals may not mount a serologic antibody response to hepatitis C infection. If the initial hepatitis C antibody screen is reactive, then the CDC recommends performing reflexive hepatitis C RNA testing. This should ideally be done in an automated process using the same patient blood sample. Individuals who have a positive hepatitis C antibody test and a positive hepatitis C RNA test are considered to have active current infection. 
whereas persons with a positive hepatitis C antibody test and a negative RNA test are considered to have prior exposure to the hepatitis C virus without active infection. To review hepatitis C testing result interpretations further, a positive antibody and RNA test is consistent with current active infection. These individuals with this testing profile should be linked to care for treatment of their hepatitis C infection. Individuals with a positive antibody test but a negative RNA test have evidence of prior exposure to hepatitis C, but they do not have active hepatitis C infection. This serologic profile typically occurs in individuals who have spontaneously cleared the hepatitis C virus or in those who were successfully treated and cured. These individuals should be counseled that they remain susceptible to hepatitis C, but no treatment is required. Individuals with a negative hepatitis C antibody and a positive hepatitis C RNA have acute hepatitis C infection, most likely acquired in the past three months. These individuals should be linked to care for treatment of their hepatitis C infection. Finally, individuals who have a negative hepatitis C antibody and negative hepatitis C RNA have no evidence of current or past hepatitis C infection. They should be counseled that they remain susceptible to the hepatitis C virus, but no treatment is indicated. For persons who are newly diagnosed with hepatitis C, there are several important key messages. First, individuals should be counseled to contact a healthcare provider to discuss hepatitis C treatment, as hepatitis C can be easily cured. Second, they should be counseled on how to protect their liver from further harm. This includes getting vaccinated against other liver viruses, including hepatitis A and hepatitis B, reducing or discontinuing alcohol consumption, avoiding new medications or supplements that might be damaging to the liver, and considering weight loss in persons who are overweight to prevent the development of fatty liver disease. Finally, persons with a new diagnosis of hepatitis C should be counseled on how to minimize the risk of transmission to others. This can be done through not sharing needles, injection works, or other personal hygiene equipment that may be contaminated with blood, and by not donating tissue, blood, or semen. To learn more about hepatitis C, please check out our online hepatitis C curriculum, which contains a variety of lessons, cases, and slides to reinforce your knowledge. Thanks for joining me today. The production of this hepatitis C online mini lecture was supported by funding from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention.